This isn't your normal vlog, folks, but um, we lost power in the middle of the night. So uh, we woke up to that. We tried to switch over to the vehicle battery and you do get some lights that come on straight away. But unfortunately that just dies within uh, about a minute. Um, I'm not too fussed about the vehicle battery being dead, although it shows it's got at least 12 volts there. So it should actually start the van. Um, but I've got that booster pack as well. So I'm not too fussed about that. There you go, it's just died now. I took a screenshot in the middle of the night of the um, battery monitor system. Um, and that just kind of said an eight and a half volts. But he said 47% left. So that's kind of got me thinking there's something wrong. Um, if it's got 47% left, it's managed to calculate everything that's been charged and everything used. Uh, and it said only 100 amp hours have been used. So there should be 100 amp hours left. 7.52. And um, yeah, there's not enough solar. So this solar controller is um, not pulling anything in. The light's just barely flashing on it, so there's not enough of that. So we've got no power. And, um, you know, being that it's me and everything, we've spent about a week off grid thinking it'll all be all right. Um, watching the battery monitor system, watching it still say it's 47%, you know, thinking, well, I'm only halfway there. That's great. You know, a week of being off grid and a bit of sunshine every now and again, it would top it back up. But no. So I guess what I'm saying is, you know, I need to look into this, but I should have been carrying a hookup cable with me. Because right now we are actually on a campsite that's got power. So they're all nice and tight. Um, it's going across. Everything's wired exactly as it should be. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just check the voltages across them. Uh, just to see what's going on. Okay. So this battery is giving me... 11.97 and 11.97 so the batteries are identical so what that kind of tells me right now both batteries are measuring identical voltage 11.97 so that tells me that both batteries are fine and they've been connected fine as well so what the test is now obviously i've calibrated the batteries to be 100% charged they weren't taking any more charge or if it was it was a small amount of a float slash trickle charge coming in it certainly was only getting around about sort of like four to maybe five amps which is a trickle charge and um, the 20 amp charge had dropped down over a few days so what we're going to do now is just load it up with this one and a half kilowatt load 127 amps and um, and see what sort of percentage we're going to draw that down and see there four amp hours that consumption there is going to hopefully equal as close to 200 amps as possible by the time the batteries give out so if we're using 128 amp hours right now then it should be yeah it should be about two hours shouldn't it thereabouts so come back in two hours and see where we're at so i've been running the fan heater constantly now for around about half an hour um, i've used 68 amp hours up the battery voltage has dropped so unfortunately that keeps tripping off now because the inverter knows if the battery voltage is low it will cut itself off so after a few days it was very clear that what was the actual problem is that the sergeant system which is like the inbuilt electrical system that came with our van um, is a pretty poor a charger for the lithium batteries um, at best it kind of achieved around about sort of maybe uh, 10 amps an hour charge uh, and at worst it was down to two amps and that was whether you drive in or whether you're on hookup and um, the downside to this was that it just wasn't getting enough volts either the lithium's like over 14 volts probably about 14.4 ish whereas the sergeant system was given about 13.8 um, at best so it just wasn't enough so what I've done is um, go for a Victron um, battery combiner uh, and that's an add-on to my Victron uh, BMV uh, which manages the batteries and everything else and in combination those two uh, are controlling the flow of charge coming from my engine 
so up to 120 amps an hour as well if it needs it so that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to install that kit and um, and that's going to resolve that problem now hopefully in the future uh, you know a couple of hours of driving or more should get a really good charge into the lithium batteries worst case is you know if we are unable to drive there's no solar we can still go on hook up um, and it will power everything um, but it just really doesn't put a good charge in the lithium batteries so it's not ideal but we've got that as a, a last resort backup option so this little thing is what's going to provide me with up to um, 100 amps of power or 120 amps of power should we say um, obviously that depends on what the alternator um, can currently give out and also what the battery actually wants to receive or what the battery banks want to receive so if the battery banks are fully depleted and the engine um, has no other loads on there and we're traveling down the motorway um, then potentially it could achieve up to 120 amps an hour so the leisure side connects to there so the my lithiums connect there and then the vehicle battery connects there and the vehicle battery obviously has the alternator connected to it so these two connections on the back here actually connect to that on the back and that's so it can tell them when to switch the relay on as in to allow current from here from the vehicle to here which is the lithium to pass through um, or the relay may be told to um, shut off uh, because the batteries are fully charged um, or they're over temperature or something like that um, so that's essentially um, this system here working in conjunction with that so the two work in conjunction with each other so i'm going to complete the bit up front and fuse all that and then i'll work in the back and get all that fused so what i've done at the moment is i've just finished off setting the cable up there it's a 50 mil cable uh, i've put a lug on the end of it uh, which is a quite a hefty bit of a lug and um, i've got a uh, little fuse that's going to go in there like that um, what I'm waiting for at the moment is um, just for some heat shrink to arrive just so I can finish it all off nice and properly and uh, some M8 bolts as well so that I can fasten this in there with a bolt so it all connects all right um, and then what I've done is that then goes under the chassis so my 50 mil cable is inside there so if anything ever happens to it being crushed or anything like that it's well out of the way tucked up all nice and neat all fastened out of the way and it goes down to the battery area uh, obviously the main thing really is say for example if somebody did jack up the car and snag the cable it could potentially then short the cable to the chassis of the van whereas at least with this in place this and the cable shield itself um, there's no chance really it's going to snag um, the chassis of the van it's just going to get crushed inside there and that's going to be it so that's why you put your uh, cable through uh, one of these conduits really to protect against crushing and shorting out with the chassis. So that's my cable. So it's about as thick as my finger. It's 50 millimeters. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe about as thick as my thumb actually. Um, but yeah, that's my cable and that's gonna bring in the 100 amps um, from the um, relay or through the relay, should I say, um, into my battery bank. Obviously, I need to neaten up some of those cables a little bit. Um, but yeah, I need to get a larger charge into my battery bank. So here's my setup. There's my relay. Those two wires are going out to one is the ground um, and the other one is the um, basically the operational wire. The wire from the BMV that tells the relay to open or close. That's my 50 mil cable that goes all the way back to the uh, starter battery. And I've got more 50 mil cable goes to a fuse 120 amp fuse again and then that joins into the positive side of my battery so some people assume that you should have um your charge coming in one side and then all your load going out the other side and that's not the case whatsoever join your two batteries together but your charge and your load come off the same side so i hope that makes sense to a lot of people i've just seen a lot of people wire it the wrong way so I need to make sure that you all know which is the right way. And it's not just like my right way. It's it's the way electrons flow and the best way to make the use of electrons. So, um, yeah, um, your 12 volt side charge and load coming into the same pole. That's the right way to do it. 
I've called Phil here today because uh, well, actually I didn't call you here. No, was, I offered to come. Offered to come. Yes, yeah. so it's not like I've made him drive hours. No. For for putting in two cables and going to do, do, do a little bit, uh, but it was basically because I can do so many things I can do, and then um, Phil's like Mr. Victron expert. So um, Cooper has joined us now because obviously Gadget Cooper, Gadget John, Geek Phil is on the panel. Um, we wanted to do a bit of testing. We've explained everything, what happens now, so you know about what it is we've installed. The main bit we want to do is, does it work? How do we test it? So we've got a one and a half kilowatt fan heater, plugged it into the inverter, switched it on, and monitored it with the little battery monitor software, which you get from Victron. Just to see, at a certain percentage that we'd set to say, start charging me, which was 98%. Um, and obviously at 99%, will you stop charging? and that's kind of what we did so the way to actually charge something is engine the way to discharge it is a one and a half kilowatt fan eater so we did that one and a half kilowatt fan eater came on saw that it was drawing 120 odd amps and um, basically waited for that to drop enough that the relay had actually clicked in and engaged went and started the van the original kind of like concept of what we were doing then became a bit funny and geeky Mm -hmm. because actually then the alternator took over from the entire drain of the fan eater. So the alternator was providing essentially 120 amps, which meant the battery wasn't providing anything, and it showed zero on the stats, even though there was a one and a half kilowatt fan eater coming out, which is interesting. But at least it proves that the alternator can provide 120 odd amps-ish, whatever, um, and that was all right. Everything worked okay. It meant we tested the circuit to yeah. its theoretical uh, maximum level. Yeah. It worked perfectly. Yeah. And before anyone says anything about stuff like that, um, obviously there are tolerances of charge rate for batteries. The lithiums are 50%, but actually up to 100%. So I've got two 100 amp hour batteries. So that's 200 amps. So essentially, even on the safe side, I could put, 100 amps through them and that isn't an issue but apparently they can take up to 200 yeah, yeah. so that's all right if you've got a lead acid battery agm that kind of thing yours is like was it 20 percent? 20 percent. so just be cautious that's probably why in our van it came with a 20 amp charger yeah the sergeant stuff because that's their safe side of charge rate whereas i want to be able to charge my lithium batteries faster yeah essentially Generally, lead acid batteries you charge at 10 to 20 percent of their capacity, uh, unless you've been really careful and have temperature probes and things like that on them. But with lithium ion batteries, it's normally 50 percent of the capacity, so a 100 amp hour battery can be charged at 50 amps, or in John's case, with his 200 amp hours, 100 amps, and even up to 200 amps if required. What would you say the cost was of installing it in total? <laughs> Somebody asked me that on Did Instagram because I put a picture on Instagram. So I paid £72 for the um, the actual, um, just call it a battery combiner. Minor, yeah. um, I paid £30 for the 50 mil cable, and then I put some ends on. Um, I think everything else I had. If you included things like, you know, the fact that um, I had to put some heat shrink on, and the fuse is either end and a fuse holder, Let's say in total I've spent £110. I didn't install this, John yeah, installed it himself. Now we, we have paired it with the, because uh, you can use this relay with normal lead acid batteries as well, you can buy the lead acid version of it. Um, the We've paired it with the Victron BMV so that we can shut off the charge when the lithiums are full. You don't need to do that with lead acid because they're quite happy to sit there on absorption and it's no problem. Um, now you installed it all by yourself. Yeah. Um, what do you think the complexity was of the installation? Uh, the complexity, strangely enough, was the tiny, tiny wires yeah. between the BMV sure. and the relay to say, listen, there's a common circuit, which is your ground or whatever, sure. and then there's an able circuit. Yeah. The enable circuit had to go through its own little fuse just to protect itself. Um, and then we needed to connect one between um, closed and open sure. so that we knew which way the relay was switching. And then probably what you did on the um, the app to basically set those um, 98% and 99% enable and disable of the relay. So the actual physical installation 
the, it's not a difficult job an hour. <laughs> I would I would think that most people who work on their vans would easily do that installation. I mean the the finickiest bit yeah was um, routing the cable from the battery box sure. underneath the van through the um, conduit. Yeah. The uh, the conduit's used. I uh, probably explained it in another part of this video, but the conduit's used as a protection against the cable being crushed against the chassis and shorting out. And that's essentially what you're doing. So feeding the cable through the conduit and then the conduit under the side of the van that probably took about. I don't know, 25 minutes to do it and then another 10 minutes to neaten it all up and get it all out of the way sort of thing, so. Okay. Finicky rather than fiddly or anything like that, yeah. So I'm gonna give a brief technical explanation of basically what we did, right. okay? So what we've done is we've installed a battery combiner relay that connects the starter battery to the rear battery bank through a nice thick positive cable that is able to carry the load but with a very low voltage drop across the circuit. That relay has two more wires, one which is a grained wire that just goes to chassis or to the negative on the battery and then it has an enable wire. When the enable wire is positive that relay is operational, it doesn't mean it kicks in, it still doesn't kick in until it senses the right voltages on either side but when it's disconnected that relay is turned off and it won't operate. So that what that pin is also used if you click it three times to do the start assist, which connects all the batteries together, just in case you've got a flat starter battery, you've left the lights on or something. Now what we've done in this case for lithiums, you don't need to do this with lead acid, is uh, John's van has a Victron uh, 712BMV fitted, which is a battery monitor, which is able to uh, give you an accurate reading of how much energy is stored inside your lithium batteries. One of the great things about it is it has a programmable relay on the display unit. So what we've done is we've programmed that relay to be able to change on different states of charge of the batteries. So John has put a cable in from the new relay, the combiner relay, up to that uh, battery monitor so that we can turn it on and off enable it and disable it depending on the state of charge of the lithium batteries so that's an extra wire which is the bit that John was saying was complicated to to install but that's not normal that's only something that you would do with lithium batteries you don't need to do that if you've got lead acids and what that does is that enables or disables the battery relay depending on whether we're 100% charged or whether we've dropped below 98% charge. Now, I, I mean, I hope I've summed that up quite well. Yeah, and the, and the difficulty was that I put them in the wrong way around, yeah. and it took us 10 minutes to work that out, and I'd installed it, fitted it, finished it off and everything. I must <laughs> say, though, I did tell him to fit them the wrong way around, so it is actually my fault. So, so we had to strip down some of the panel the yeah. way to get it back off just to change the wires around. But I, I would say that most people would fit that relay in an afternoon without oh, yeah. too many problems at all. Yeah. Just depending on where your starter battery is yeah. and where your leisure batteries are. I mean, yeah. if they're really close together, you'd fit it in 20 minutes. I yeah, because some so. people on a Jakarta have the leisure batteries underneath the driver's seat. Yeah. In which case, if you've got everything there, it could be, like you say, yeah. you know, a couple just of hours literally and done, coming up and, yeah. and across. That's pretty much it done, really. Yeah. Covered yeah. it all, tested it, geeky tested it. And um, and then kind of like played with it a little bit too. Yeah. So, yeah. thank you very much, Phil. No problem at all. And don't forget, any questions, put them to John. <laughs> yeah, because obviously I'm an expert now because I've done it. <laughs> <laughs>